five and a half million subs, millions of views per video, and hasn't uploaded in the past eight months. Well, at least he's consistent. All right, what's up guys? My name is Jacques or GQ, and today I'm showing you guys how it like fits that tall, slender, funny YouTuber. All right, no quick disclaimer. I cannot cover every single effect he does in every single one of his videos, because if I did, we'd be here for quite some time, but I'm gonna be picking out the ones that I feel like he uses the most often, and I feel like you guys will get the most use out of. But before we hop into these effects, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you wanna make it. Now, the effects we're going to be covering in this video are a handful of text animations, this shake effect that can be applied to text, graphics, and video. Next, we're going to be covering this hand motion tracking. And then lastly, we're going to be covering his outro screen where it's like, thank you for watching that he has at the end of every single one of his videos. Now, the first effect we're going to be covering are these text animations. So let's hop into Premiere. I'll show you guys what we're getting into today. And right, I've got four text animations here, so we're gonna go through them rapid fire, but this one's gonna be pretty simple. First is gonna be this text growing in on top of itself, and I've already got some text here on the timeline that we're gonna be messing with. First, select your text on your timeline, then go to the effects controls in the top left and move your playhead all the way to the beginning. Then hit the stopwatch next to scale, move your playhead forward a bit and change this value to zero. Then move your playhead forward a little bit, just as far as you want your text to be growing, basically. Then change this value to 100. Now, this is like the basic form of the text growing in on top of itself, but there's a way to make it spiced up a little bit and look a bit nicer. What we're going to do is go down to the anchor point here and select that. Then go over to your preview window and see this little circle with a cross in it. Basically, take that circle and then move it to the middle of your text. And then here you go, here's this text growing on top of itself, and it's super simple. Basically, what that anchor point did is instead of that text growing from the middle of the screen, it made the text grow from on top of itself, and to me, it's that spice on top that really adds a lot to the edit. Next, we're going to be covering when the text kind of jumps in on top of itself. It's so similar to the one that we just did that we're actually going to copy it over and then add one more thing. So to make a duplicate of that text we we're just messing with, hold down your Alt key, left click, and then drag it over. Then select that text that we just duplicated, and then grab your playhead and move it just about three-fourths of the way in between these two keyframes here, and then change your scale value to 110. Now our animation here is kind of slow. That's because these keyframes are really spread out. So to make that quicker, all you have to do is just grab these keyframes and bunch them up a little bit closer. And the more you bunch them up, the faster it'll be. So up to your discretion, just do what you need to do. And here you go, here's that jump in effect we just made. Like I said, really similar to the last one. Now this next effect we're gonna be covering is when the text is like rotating and fading out at the same time. So like the rest of these, go ahead and select your text and then go to the effects controls in the top left. Now to begin this one, we're gonna mess with anchor points. So go ahead and select that and then grab the circle with the cross center again and move it in the middle of your text, just like we did with that text growing in on top of itself. Then move your playhead to the very beginning of your clip here and then hit the stopwatch next to rotation. Then move your playhead forward a bit, and then change your value to negative seven. Now, if you choose a negative value, your text is gonna to rotate to the left, and if you choose a positive value, your text is gonna to rotate to the right, so do whatever you wanna do. Next, scroll down a little bit, and then under opacity, you're gonna hit this add keyframe button, move this one all the way to the beginning, and then change your opacity value to zero. Now, this is at the beginning of our text, so just to get it to the end, hold left click and select all these keyframes, and then move it to the very end. Oh, and I almost forgot there's one last thing we have to do for this text animation. You can use these arrow keys here next to the add keyframe button to make sure that you're lined up with this first keyframe, but then go to scale and hit the stopwatch next to scale, then use the next keyframe button to go over the next keyframe, and then change that scale value to zero. And this will also add that shrinking effect, which is a part of the same text animation. And then here you go, here's that text animation we just did, another simple one, and the next one is also pretty simple. All right, and the last text animation that we're gonna be covering is when text is swiping off the screen just like this. Now this has the same idea as that jump in text, but what we're gonna do is kind of have a jumping out at the end. Now for this text, we're actually gonna to have to use an effect, so go to the effects in the top right hand corner of your screen and look for an effect called transform. Then under distort, you'll find transform and drag it on top of your text. Then go to the effects controls in the top left. Let's say here we want our text in the middle of our screen, so I'm just gonna grab our Y value and move it up a little bit to where it's in the middle of the screen. So first go ahead to stopwatch next to position, then move your playhead forward just a little bit and grab this Y value and then make it to where basically your text is a little bit higher than where it started or not, then move your playhead forward again, roughly about three times the distance between these two keyframes, and then basically grab your Y value here on the left and left click and then drag your mouse over to the right until your text is off screen. Now, one more thing to add a little bit of a motion blur to this so it looks a bit better. Go ahead and come down here to use composition shutter angle and then uncheck this box, then change your shutter angle to 360. And then here you go, here's all the animations we just made. Like I said, these weren't too difficult to do, but next we're gonna be hopping into that shake animation, which isn't too bad. 
So for this effect, we're gonna be using transform again. So just grab one and then drag on top of your text. Then grab your playhead and move it to the very beginning of your clip here and hit the stopwatch next to position. Now to make this a lot easier on you guys, so I'm not sitting here just rambling off a bunch of numbers, you're gonna take all of these numbers and then you're gonna add them in as keyframes. So essentially what I would do here is I would take this first keyframe value, I would come over to position. And since the default is already that keyframe value, you're gonna hit your right arrow key on your keyboard to move over to the right one frame. And then you're gonna plug in this second value. Then once you've plugged in that second value, use the right arrow key on your keyboard again to move to the right one frame and then plug in the next keyframe and then just do this until you get to the end of all the keyframes. Now, if you did this right, your effects control is going to look like this, which doesn't look like we've really done much. But what we're going to do is grab this little scroll bar here at the bottom and then zoom in. And you can see now that our keyframes are actually there and they're not just jumbled on top of each other. And basically, this is the animation, but it's a very short version of it. So to make it longer, basically what we're going to do is left click and select all of these keyframes, hold down your alt key, left click, and then drag them over to make a copy. Then you basically, you're just going to sit here and make copies as long as you want your animation to go. Let's say I've dragged out a couple of them like this. Now to save myself some more time i'm just going to select all of them and then duplicate all of these keyframes i've just made too and essentially this is how i do all of my long animations and one last thing for the text animation if you want to add motion blur to it which i think is a really good touch go ahead and come down here and uncheck this box that says use composition shutter angle and then change your shutter angle to 360. So once you've made a duplicate of a lot of those keyframes, this is what your effect's gonna look like. And like I said, you can apply it to text, graphics, and even your video if you want. It doesn't matter, it'll all be applied in the same way. All right, next we're gonna be covering some motion tracking, and I like to do this by hand in Adobe Premiere, but you can do this in After Effects, and it will be a little bit cleaner if you do. But to me, it just it's a lot easier for me to do this in Premiere, do a little bit of hand tracking, instead of taking it out of Premiere, moving it to After Effects, doing all the motion tracking in there, rendering it, and then moving it back in Premiere, because to me, that just, it requires a lot of time and effort when I could just spend a little bit of time and effort in here and get it done. All right, so for our example, I've got some CSGO footage here on the timeline. And I think for this example, we're gonna be following the butt of this knife here. So first, what you have to do is go to the project files in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, right-click and then go to new item and then add it in an adjustment layer. Go ahead and make this 60 frames per second and hit OK. Then drag this on top of your timeline above your clip and then trim it down. Next, go back to the effects in the top right and look for transform and then drag that on top of that adjustment layer. Go to the effects controls in the top left. And like I said, we're gonna be following the butt of that knife. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and change our scale to 400 to zoom in a lot. And then we're gonna use these X and Y values here in the left to basically find where the butt of that knife is. Essentially what we're gonna do is try to make the butt of this knife in the very middle of the screen as much as we can. Then we're gonna hit the stopwatch next position. And you're gonna move your play it forward a little bit. And then you can see here that our butts kind of moved a bit. So what we have to do is grab our keyframes again and then readjust it to where that knife is in the middle of the screen once again. Then we repeat that. So basically we just come forward a little bit more, adjust our keyframes and then just do this essentially as many times as you need to. Now, once you've gone through and made a couple of these keyframes, you are gonna to have to clean it up a little bit. So I've left a little bit of a gap here. So we have an error that we can check on. Basically what you're gonna to have to do is move your play it in between these two lines. And we can see here that the butt of the knife isn't in the middle of the screen. So basically you're you're gonna have to go in between your keyframes a little bit and then just check up and make sure that the butt of the knife is still in the middle of your screen. Then we just readjust it, make a new keyframe, and that's it. Right, and then here you go. Here's that poor man's motion tracking we just did. But now we're down to our last effect, which is this outro screen where it says, thank you for watching. Has a nice glitchy noise effect going on. This is gonna be the most difficult thing out of the whole video, but I'm gonna try to lay it out for you guys as simple as possible. But one quick disclaimer, I could not make this effect exactly like he does it because I just don't know like the TV static effect he uses. But what I did is make a version of it that holds a lot of value when compared to his. So I think you guys are gonna like this one too. And for example, here's what it's gonna look like at the end. All right, now for this effect, you're gonna need something that you don't currently have. And I've left the download link down in the description for you guys to get it, but it's this TV static that I use for this effect. If you have something else you wanna use for yours, go ahead and do that, but I'm gonna be using this one in this example. Now, like I said, there's a lot going on in this effect, so we're gonna lay it out a little bit, and then I'm gonna show you guys what the actual effects we're gonna be using are. So basically, I have the text here that I've been using the entire time throughout this video. Then we have our TV static that we're gonna layer on top of that. Next, we're gonna go to the project files in the bottom left-hand corner and grab another adjustment layer. Go ahead and trim this down to size and hold your Alt key, left click, and make a duplicate down under it. Next, go ahead and hit your T key to bring your text tool and then click anywhere in your preview window. And for ours, we're just gonna make ours have these like two arrows and then play in all caps. Go ahead and switch back to our selection tool and then move this down to this little gap here on our timeline. Go ahead and cut it down. Next, go to the effects on the top right hand corner of your screen and look for an effect called Ultra Key. You're gonna drag this on top of that TV static. Next, look for an effect called Noise. You can find that down under Noise and Grain and then drag that on top of your TV static. After that, look for Lens Distortion. 
Now there's gonna be a lot of the lens distortions here, but basically what I like to do is just hit this arrow key to get rid of all the lens distortion removals. And then down under video effects and distort, you can find the lens distortion we're gonna be using. I'll drag that on top of your TV static, and then also drag it on top of your play text. Next, we're gonna be looking for an effect called VR chromatic aberrations. Drag that on top of your TV static. Next, we're gonna be looking for an effect called black and white. You're gonna grab that and then drag it on top of that top adjustment layer. And then lastly, we're gonna look for an effect called wave warp. And down at the very bottom here under distort, you're gonna grab this wave warp and move it onto that bottom adjustment layer. Next, go ahead and select the TV static at the very top. In the begin, we're gonna change our scale to 120. Then go down to opacity and change our opacity to 15 and our blend mode to overlay. After that, come down to the ultra key here, change your setting to custom, hit this little rectangle here, then drag the circle down in the bottom left corner to have white and hit okay. Now this is where these settings get really annoying. So instead, I'm just gonna show you a screenshot of what all of your effects controls should look like. Now, when we go under matte generation, this is what your settings should look like. So if you need to go ahead and pause the video and put all these in. Next, we're gonna come down here to our matte cleanup. And then once again, if needed, pause the video and plug in all of these values. Then we can minimize that and we're not gonna have to mess with spill suppression or color correction. So we can minimize ultra key. Then for noise, we're gonna change our amount of noise to 100%. Go ahead and minimize that because we're done with that. Then come down to lens distortion and change your curvature to 24. Now we're done with lens distortion, so we can go ahead and minimize that. And then we don't have to mess with the chromatic aberrations at all, so go ahead and minimize that one. Now what I like to do for this effect is hold your alt key, left click and make a duplicate above that first TV static. Then go to that duplicate we just made and change your rotation value to like negative 190 or something. Essentially what we want to do is spread out to where there's more TV static going on. So roughly about here is nice. And you don't have to do that effect, but it's something that I like to do. Next, we're going to come down to this top adjustment layer and then go to the effects controls in the top left. Then under black and white, you're going to want to hit this rectangle here. Then come to your preview window, hold down your shift key, click the top left corner of this box, and then click the bottom left hand corner of this box, and then drag this out to the left as far as possible. Then come over here to this right side of the box, hold shift again, and then click both of these corners, then drag it to the right as far as possible. After that, you're going to drag this mask to the very top of your preview window here. Move your playhead to the very beginning of your clip. Then hit the stopwatch next to mask path. Then move your playhead forward a little bit, basically to the very end of this clip. And then click your mask one. Then grab your of your uh, then grab your mask and move it to the very begot. Then grab this mask and move it to the very bottom of your play view. F then grab this mask and move it to the very bottom of your preview window. After that, go ahead and change your mask feather to 160. Now we're done with that adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and go to this bottom adjustment layer. Come over here to wave warp. And this is another one with a lot of value. So here you go, plug all these in, and then we're gonna move on to the next thing. All right, now we're at our playtext here. So go back to the effects controls. And you're gonna wanna change your curvature to eight. And what this is gonna do is add all this white outline, which we don't want. So go ahead and uncheck this box that says fill alpha, and then I'll get rid of all of it. Now for my example, I'm gonna be wanting to use a different font. So go ahead and enter T key, select this text, and then come down here to our text source. Now in my case, I'm gonna show you guys the font that I'm using, but it's like a very like digital VCR font. And it's called VCR OSD mono. So you can go ahead and look that up on like whatever site you wanna look it up on. All right, now the last thing we're gonna be doing is going to our bottom text here. And Fitz has this in the middle of the screen, it's growing a little bit, so it's the same thing that I'm gonna do. Just go ahead, move our text to the very middle of the screen. Then we're gonna go to the scale over here in the effects controls, move your playhead all the way to the beginning and hit the stopwatch next to scale. Then move your playhead all the way to the end and go ahead and change that value to roughly 120. Not much, but just a little bit so you can see that there's movement going on. All right, and then here you go. Here's that nice looking outro we just made. Now you feel accomplished, I feel accomplished, and I'm also feeling very anxious because this is the third time I've recorded this video all the way through, but hopefully this time my footage doesn't get corrupt so hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. Also, let me know down in the comments below if there's something else or somebody else you want me to cover in a future video. Until next time, peace. If the third time trying to record this video, if my footage gets corrupted or uh, works out fine and I'm a happy person, we'll find out.